everybody. I'm Reverend Steve Killam. I am the senior pastor here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church, and we are certainly glad that you are joining us today for our online service. I have a couple of things to go over with you today. You know, it is becoming the fall. I know it, it's, it's hard to believe right now. It's still 100 degrees outside, and it will be until October, but school is back in session. Uh, things are starting to settle down a little bit, and so if, if you're in Lufkin, or if you're just coming through and you wish to join us, uh, we worship at 11 a.m. on Sundays, and we're located at 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. That's basically the intersection of Hanks and Loop 287. We would certainly be glad if you could join us. Yes, we are the home church for Chip and Tater, the puppets. Hey, that's us. So uh, if, you, if you're if uh, you watching this online and, and you wish to, to give us uh, an offering, uh, you can do so by sending it to P.O. Box 921. It's in Lufkin, Texas, and the zip code there is 75902. Uh, just go ahead and help us out uh, for, for the online service, for the puppets, and for all the various things that we do. We would certainly appreciate anything that, that you would send us. Uh, if you have anything that you would like to uh, say on the, the, the service, if you're watching uh, on uh uh, Facebook Live, go ahead and put it there in the comments. If uh, and Tell us that you're here. Uh, give us anything that you think that, that we might like to, to know. If you have a prayer concern or anything like that, go ahead and post it in there. Uh, at this time, I invite you to get into a prayerful mood for our service. Go fight win. Amen.
Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit on each and every one of us watching today. And let this service be truly inspirational for all. We ask these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen. Let's join in our profession of faith this morning. Our profession of faith will be the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended to heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence shall come the judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in silent prayer and preparation. Dear Lord, we know that you are with us. No matter what happens, no matter uh, if, if a storm comes, if disaster strikes, we know that you are there. We ask that you be with those that, that are, are getting through times of chaos, that are getting through times of disorder right now. Uh, let them feel your love and your strength as they try to do things to put lives back together. Lord, we lift up the, you in this, this, this time of uh, where uh, we, we come together in, in remembrance of, of September the 11th of, of 21 years ago. But we ask that you be with those that are mourning loss of loved ones and loss of other things that happened uh, because of that tragic day. Lord, we ask that you be with all of our people that are that are sick and ailing, we ask that you that you be so that they can feel that strength. Be with the doctors, be with the nurses, be with the paraprofessionals and the techs and all those that do such an amazing job of healing us. But we know that you are the great healer, and we know that that miracles happen with you every day, every hour, every minute, every second. And there's absolutely nothing that is outside the realm of your amazingness. 
Lord, we lift up all of our brothers and sisters around the world. We lift up those that are in our community. We lift up those in the state, in the country, and, and worldwide as, as, we, as we know that you are Father of all nations. And help us be better at accepting other people of other walks of life because we know that, that this is heaven on earth. But Lord, we also lift up your son, Jesus Christ, with all of his teachings that, that he did. And uh, we ask that you help us put those teachings into practice. And together we lift up that prayer that he said when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I know it's all you've got to just be strong. It's a fight just to keep it together, together And you may think that you are too far gone But hope is never lost Hope is never lost Hold on, don't let go of Jesus hold on don't let go just take one step closer put one foot in front of the other you get through this just follow his light in the darkness you're gonna be okay I know your heart is heavy from those nights Just remember that you are a fighter, a fighter You never know just what tomorrow holds With Christ you're stronger than you know You're stronger than you know Hold on, don't let go of Jesus. Hold on, don't let go. Just take one step closer. Put one foot in front of the other. You'll get through this. Just follow his light in the darkness. One step closer put one foot in front of the other you get through this just follow his light in the darkness you're gonna be okay Tater. 
<sighs> What's wrong? I've lost something. Oh no! Something very valuable to me. Well, what did you lose? My pocket knife. Oh, wow. I don't think it's in my back. <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha. Very funny. Like I would stab you in the back. Okay, I'm sorry. That was a bad joke. Like I would leave it in your back. <laughs> Jeez. How stupid would that be? Okay. Well, where have you looked? Everywhere. Hmm. Where was the last place you had it? The first place I looked. <laughs> so why don't you just get another one? It has sentimental value. It was my grandfather's. Aw, how sweet. He gave you his pocket knife before he died. Not exactly. <laughs> I took it after he died. <laughs> He could be a little selfish, <laughs> but I snatched it before anyone else could. And now it's gone. Yes. <sighs> Karma, perhaps? No, I looked into my car. <laughs> <laughs> I meant... Never mind. Yes, it can be frustrating to lose things when you've looked everywhere. I have. I looked everywhere. Jesus talks about lost things in Luke's gospel. A lost sheep, a lost coin, even a lost son. No lost pocket knife? Nope, no lost pocket knife. Have you asked God? Pretty sure he didn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why would God need that cheap old, th old timer? Tater, that's not nice. No, that's the brand. Old timer, better than a buck. Wait, did you just do a paid advertisement? <laughs> hey, we gotta do something to mon monetize these things. <laughs> uh, sometimes we need to go to God in prayer. It helps us to focus and relax. Can't hurt. Much. <laughs> so let's go to our Lord in prayer. Everyone bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Help us relax when we get flustered. Help us relax when we get flustered. Help us remember. Help us remember. Help us remember who you are. Help us remember who you are. And where we should be. And where we should be. Amen. Amen. That's it! That's what? Now I remember where I, my knife is. Okay, where? It's at the church. At the church? I had to hide it when the cops came. <laughs> when the cops came? I gotta go. No time to chat. Goodbye, Tater. <laughs> I really need to be more observant. <laughs>Scripture this morning comes from the book of Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or, suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me! I have found my lost coin! In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, open up our hearts, open up our minds, and help us learn. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen. You know, this is the first of the lost parables in Luke's gospel. Uh, the last one is omitted, and then we omitted it to, in the reading today, and it's the, it's the parable of the lost son. But my question is, have you ever lost something that, and spent a lot of time searching for it? Of course, we all have. You know, this is one of the things that makes this hit so close to home. You know, last week, uh, I was out mowing with my tractor. My tractor, uh, the mower, is one of these that uses shear pins instead of a clutch. When it, when it runs into something that it has a hard time mowing, uh, the shear pin is the weak link, so instead of uh, torquing out and, and ruining a drive shaft, uh, and a, you know, a $200 drive shaft, uh, it breaks a $3 shear pin. And so I usually have a bunch of shear pins around because, yes, I, I tend to, to go through a lot of them. I tend to break things quite often because you know, I said, yeah, I think I can mow this uh, Yeah. You know, my, my son Patrick knew this so much that uh, when he was working for my father and myself at, uh, uh, mowing one summer, that he had a little fanny pack that he kept with him. And in that fanny pack, he kept two three-quarter inch wrenches, which is what you use to, to tie them down with, and probably three or four shear pins, and then something that he could poke the pin out uh, of, of the place that he did shear it off in. So yeah, we, we use a lot of shear pins. So I, I, I sheared a pin. And I go back to the barn, and because I usually have multiples ready to go for that reason, and I couldn't find them. So I looked in my truck, because I usually have at least one in my truck, so that when I get down to where I only have one or two left, I can go to the hardware store and say, hey, this is what I need, uh, let's, let's buy four or five of these. And I couldn't find one in the truck, and I was just going, where, where are all the shear pins? So I went the next day to the hardware store, and all I had was the, the sheared off little piece of bolt. And so we matched that up, and so I bought several, and I went out finally with my son Ben, and, uh, and the pin that I had bought didn't fit. It was a little too big to go through the hole. I was going, oh, man, I'm just going to waste the whole evening because the stores are closed now, and I'm, I'm doing all this. And so I asked Ben, I said, Ben, where are my old shear pins? Where are my extra shear pins? He goes, they're on the bench in the barn. He, uh, exactly. I had looked there. I said, well, you go find them. And so he looked there. He goes, I, I don't know. And so after the, we couldn't make the others fit, I said, they've got to be here somewhere. So I looked one more time, and behold, they were exactly where I thought they were. They were exactly where he thought they were. But for some reason or another, we just did not see them. We could not focus on them. And, and you know, it, but it was the lost shear pin that had come home. Did I celebrate when I found them? Yes, I did. I was happy. I said, Ben, look, here are the shear pins. You know, so I, I, can, I can relate to, these, to the parables of the lost. And we use these parables of, of people who get lost from the grace of God. And that's what we kind of tie it on to. And they fire themselves and they get saved. Okay, I can see that. But like so many things in the Bible, I don't always get the same message every time that I read it. And this time I, I got a, a little bit different one. So, I couldn't find the shear pins. They were lost. But were they really? Did they move? Not that I know of. I, I'm still wondering if Ben slipped them away and then replaced them to kind of make me doubt my sanity and see if maybe I was going around the edge. Uh, but I don't think he did that. Truth is that they were always where they were. They weren't lost as much as I couldn't see them. So what's the difference? Did the coin do anything to get lost? Probably not. Uh, how about the sheep? Yes, yeah, it did. It, it did sheep stuff. But I don't think it was hiding. I don't think it intentionally wandered off. And when we look at these parables and we think of them about God's love, that's what they are. And it's about us. 
Are we really looking for grace? Because great, God's grace is always there. Or are we just ignoring it? Are we just kind of letting it go? How about those ones that don't know Jesus? Are they lost? Hmm? Yeah. Uh, do they know it? Mm, probably not. Or are they kind of like sheep that have wandered away from the flock? So whose job is it to find the lost? That's what it all boils down to. When we're reading this, we just go, well, 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 whose responsibility is it to find the lost coins, to find the lost sheep, to find the lost people? That responsibility comes to all of us. But we really have to understand what we're looking for. Are they lost and hurting people in our society? Yeah, we see them all the time. So why aren't we helping them? You know, God's love is always there. And yet so often, we kind of sort of keep it hidden. How about ourselves? Do we get lost? You know, how do we do that? There are a bunch of different things. Sometimes we just get focused on on day-to-day life that we forget about God. Sometimes we, we get focused about big things that are happening all around us. We forget God. Sometimes we, forget, we get focused on happy things that are going on around us, and we forget God. And we just get lost. God is still there. God is still there everywhere but for somehow or another we just don't see God when, when we do things that are outside of our relationship with God we in fact are lost uh, when our lives lose the meaning that, that we have for it and that God has for it then we're lost when we get when we let our priorities get in the way of relationships when we let stuff get in the way of people, we're lost. It is possible to be righteous. It's possible to, to do the things that we think God is calling us to do and still be lost. But here's the good news. All we have to do is relax and open our eyes to the obvious. Did the coin and sheep repent before being uh, before being found or after? No, that's not always a requirement. Sometimes we make too much of that thing with people that you have to repent before you can be in relationship, but not really because God is always looking for us, always. And when we're no longer lost, there will be a party. Go fight, win. Amen. So go out into the world, showing the world God's love and God's grace. 
not just by the things that you say, but by the things that you do. Go fight, win. Amen. That concludes today's service here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. If you're ever in the Lufkin area and you you want to uh, worship with us, we worship at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings here at 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. That's the intersection of Hank Street and the South Loop. Also, if you wish to give us an offering, we'll take it. And you can do so by, by sending it to P.O. Box 921, Lufkin, Texas, and the zip code is 75902. We look forward to spending time with you and, and to fellowshipping and being with you. But until that comes, go fight, win, amen.